Hello there, this is Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax, and today we're going to compare the quality of a $329, $330 Creality Ender 5 versus a Prusa i3 MK3, which sells for approximately $750 as a kit or $1,000 assembled. Okay, let's get started. All of the comparisons we're going to do today are relatively subjective. I am not proposing that what I'm doing is scientific in any way, but it's a type of comparison that you would do as a consumer or a user or a hobbyist using one of these individual printers. I'm going to start by looking at two Calico Kelly Cats. Kelly Cats are little calibration cats available on Thingiverse. And when we look at these, the white one is from the Ender 5, and the yellow one is from the Mark III, the Prusa i3 Mark III. On the surface, they are remarkably similar. Very, very different, very, very little difference. There are a couple places, minor places, on the Endler where I can see a variation in the layer, um, a layer line that is not occurring on the Prusa. And at the very, very top on these angled surfaces, uh, the quality is a bit better on the Prusa. But overall, there is no way that this yellow Prusa print is worth twice as much as this white Ender print. So very interesting. The other thing that's interesting is I used um, filaments in both these cases. Here's another one done on the Prusa, and this one is probably a better comparison because this was exactly the filament provided by Prusa with the printer, and this is the filament provided by Creality with their printer. So once again, not a scientific comparison. I should use identical filaments between the two. Probably I should tune each printer for them, but a very subjective comparison. They're both beautiful prints. Now we're gonna try something a little more interesting. This is the Kickstarter Autodesk calibration model. There are so many new 3D printers are first available on Kickstarter that Kickstarter went to Autodesk and together they produced a calibration model for testing the quality of printers. Uh, this one is printed on the Prusa i3 on their spring metal uh, print base. And this one is on the Ender 5. On their, they're both metallic, but this is actually a sheet of magnet, plasticized magnet. So we're going to start by seeing how easy it is to get these off the print surface. In the case of Prusa, they recommend you just click twice. And this came right off. And in fact, the first of the tolerance... Um, plugs came out immediately. Let's see what happens here. Now it is definitely harder to get prints off of the Ender print surface than it is to get them off of the Prusa print surface. Because it is flexible, you can sort of manipulate it a bit. Uh, you feel like you're going to damage the surface. It did not damage the surface. And in fact, also, one of the calibration pins immediately fell out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and begin to go through the criteria that's actually listed in the GitHub Kickstarter Autodesk 3D repository for the FDM assessment protocol. And I will calibrate the results and then we'll come back and look at those results together. Okay, I'm back from calibrating the tests or measuring the uh, individual tests. Uh, this is the calibration item print that was done on the Prusa. This is the calibration print that was done on the Creality uh, Ender 5. 
overall, I'll, I'll, the two prints are remarkably similar. Um, and as you'll see, it's an interesting question whether the Prusa is truly worth double the price of the Endler five, Ender 5. Let's start with dimensional accuracy. For dimensional accuracy, you use a caliper to measure each of these rings and then you measure them from two dimensions, the X dimension and the Y dimension. You write those down. I created a spreadsheet in Google Sheets. I'll show this on the screen in more detail in a minute and include a PDF of it down below. You then create an average of the two based on the average dimensional variance you score points. So in this particular case, the Ender actually scored a better score of four points versus the MK3, which is three points, but they were remarkably close. Um, both of them are well calibrated machines, meaning there's very little variance between the dimension in the X and the Y dimension. Overall, the print, print off the Prusa was slightly un, more under dimension than on the Ender. Uh, that could have to do with temperature with the individual filament that I used. So the Ender rated four points, the Prusa three points. The next is fine print control. And fine print control, you look at the overall height of these towers here, these very fine towers. A couple of them look like they're shorter. In fact, I actually broke those off inadvertently. Both of these printers printed every tower to their maximum height. The primary difference is there was very, very little stringing on the Prusa print, and there was a lot of stringing on the Ender print. Once again, they could have been temperature or filament. Um, however, they were printed with the exact same temperature. Um, therefore, the Ender rated 2.5 points and the MK3 5 points. Uh, this is just about perfect. It is remarkable. Now, part of it is that I did use Simplify 3D, which does a very, very good job at very fine points uh, when slicing. The next was fine negative features. There are a series of plugs that go into holes that have a tolerance of 0.2 to 0.5 millimeters. In both cases, all of the pins came out. In fact, as soon as I took it off the print bed, many of them fell out. Um, the actual accuracy of these pins also is remarkably good. These are just really nice prints. Uh, so they both scored top scores of five points on those. In terms of overhangs, you look at the bottom of this slanting feature, which slants from 45 degrees to 30 to 20 to 15. And you want to see the difference of the quality between those. In this case, um, it was clear that the, um, the quality on the two prints were similar. However, the Prusa um, did rate just a little bit better. Um, there was a little bit more variation um, on the lower ones on the Ender 5. Then we looked at bridging. Bridging is these structures here. Um, they both, once again, were close to perfect. Um, and I rated them both a four out of five. Now, these evaluations are a bit subjective, um, but we'll get a sense for this in a moment. XY resonance, that's whether there's ghosting or other issues uh, in the, on the side structures, on the X or the Y side, um, both of them uh, were rated close to perfect, so I gave them both uh, 2.5 points. And then XY alignment, whether there were any artifacts going up the tower, and in both cases they were identical. So when I add these both up, the Ender ended up with 23.5 points, that's this print. Really the stringing was the primary difference, and the MK3 was 26 points. So in terms of print quality, they both do a great job. So how do you decide whether to spend 
$320 or to spend uh, $750? Well, part of it is convenience. I found the print surface on the Prusa much better. It was much easier to get prints off than on the Ender. The Ender was much harder. Uh, the Prusa auto calibrates and the Prusa both auto feeds and detects filament errors. So those three items are the primary differences along with the fact that the Prusa has a higher temperature print head extruder would indicate that it is a higher end printer. Then there's a subjective item, two subjective items. The Prusa ecosystem is much richer. Uh, their support is much, much quicker. I did sample support calls to both. The Prusa folks uh, returned my, I did it by email, returned my emails much more quickly. And then if we look back here, the Prusa could almost fit inside the Endler. So if you're limited to space, the Prusa is smaller. Is that worth about double the price? Well, I will leave that to you, but I can tell you that the Ender uh, 5 is a remarkably uh, good printer that you would be very, very satisfied with as your first printer. And an advantage it has is the assembly is much, much easier than the Prusa. So if you're looking to save money but get a higher end machine, which means you have to buy a kit, the Endler is an easier kit to put together. Thank you for watching this episode of Dr. Vax. Uh, if you like this, please uh, click like, please subscribe. Have a great day and let's continue to learn things together.